hello everyone welcome back to e shikshana program uh, till last class we had start uh, started with the model 3 and con continuing this session with module 4 so here we'll start with the module 4 of water supply and sanitation building services 1 so in module 4 these are the few uh, topics which we have to cover so uh, that is in module 4, 6th topic, which is a continuation from the module 1, 2, 3, 4. So, this will be 6th topic in module 4, that is sanitary fixtures, fittings, wellness. So, these are nothing but we will be studying about the appliances which we use in plumbing. Fix in plumbing. So, the appliances could be soil appliances, waste appliances. So, in detail, we would be studying soil appliances, those are water closets, bidet, urinals, cisterns, flesh wall, etc. And waste appliances also will be studying. So, there is a difference between soil appliances and waste appliances. So, wash basin, sink, dishwasher, washing machine, these comes under waste appliances. So, soil, ap soil appliances and waste appliances, if you notice, there is a difference in the way the waste is collected. So, this, uh, these are soil waste and this is uh, other water waste which is which can be reusable soil waste cannot be it can be reusable but then they have to be separated so that while reusing it shouldn't be affected so however water closets bidet urinals cisterns is part of water closet flesh walls so in detail we'll be studying about these things in waste appliances are which uh, the water content could be reused as grey water uh, as grey water so wash basin sink dishwasher washing machine all these come under the waste which is generated from these can be classified as waste water and they categorize into waste appliances then we also study about hot water systems we have already seen this in uh, third module about uh, different types of heating systems, central heating systems and uh, uh, portable heating systems. So here briefly we could study about geysers, boils, heat pump and then we also would look, look into bath and water fixtures. So complete fixtures which we use in plumbing. So those fixtures are what we are going to look in this particular module. We have two uh, categories in module 4 that is sanitary fixture fittings and wellness products and the seventh one would be solid waste management and all other types of waste management which would be studying. So in bath and water fixtures there are taps, mixers, single liver, quarter ton, bathtub, multi jet bath, rain showers, health faucets. And wellness products will be looking at sauna bath, steam bath, jacuzzi, single and double stack system is a complete stacking system how we provide in the building. So here the special products are wellness products which is not regularly used in uh, daily life. So sauna bath, steam bath, jacuzzi and all is a separate kind of a system which, we, which also comes under plumbing fixtures or sanitary fixtures or plumbing fixtures. So we just look into this these different appliances and how it can be fixed and used. So first and foremost sanitary fixture plumbing fixture. So it can be called as sanitary fixture or plumbing fixtures. So if you have to define what is plumbing fixture, it is a part that is connected to a whole plumbing system. Plumbing system could be water supply, uh, plumbing system is complete system which connects to the whole buildings, uh, waste water, grey water, black water, all these could be connected in plumbing system. So this is part of sanitary fixtures and plumbing fixtures are part of those of the whole plumbing system and carries water through a building. The most common plumbing fixtures are bathtubs, sinks, showers. So we have residential units mostly all over. We could use bathtubs, sinks, showers, tubs, toilets, 
and faucets, right? Faucets are nothing but these uh, uh, handheld uh, uh, tap kind of a thing if somebody does not know about it. While a fixture can be fixed into walls or the floor. So, mostly these uh, as we see in our daily routine, these fixtures could be fixed, most of them could be fixed both in, uh, in on the wall or on the floors. Few fixtures like bathtub, there is no option, we will have to fix it on the floor. So, likewise there are different options available based on the fixtures. So, these are the most common fixtures and a fitting is an item that can be hung by a hook, screw or nail. These are the appliances. Now, if we have to fix it on the wall or a floor, we have to hook it or screw it or nail it. So, when this particular part of the um, activity comes, then we use few fittings. So, that is plumbing, fixtures and fittings. Okay. So, whatever it is, whether it is residential or commercial or any kind of uh, structures we build, sanitary and uh, plumbing, uh, uh, water supply and um, plumbing plays a major role. So, it is very important to select good sanitary fixtures. It also very important to uh, do proper plumbing uh, connectivity for the whole structure. So, what are the properties of good sanitary fixtures? It is durable, long lasting. So, it is it has to be long lasting. It should be impervious to water that means it should not absorb water. The material which we you may which we make uh, which we use to make these appliances like bathtub water closet, it should be not absorb water. So, the material which is used should be impervious to water. Resistance to corrosion in order to make it long lasting and to be hygienic. So, it should not corro corrode easily because it is always tend to be in the water. The water is always there in the uh, sanitary fixtures. It has to, it is a compulsory requisite, prerequisite that it has to be resistant to corrosion. So, that it also long last, it will be lasting for long and also it will be hygienic. Simple in outlet. So, it should be very simple. If you have lot of designs or carvings or any other extra addition for these equipment or for these appliances, then it becomes very difficult, very, very, very difficult to clean. So, it has to be simple outline. The outline of the body should be clean and simple. So, that where will be, there will be no crannies to hold dirt. If we have uh, too much of work or a design, so that if we see art deco style and uh, if we see olden, olden times, even then the appliances of these kinds are uh, simple, mostly simple. So, uh, there, there used to be little work on the maybe the closet, uh, cover covers or on the facade of the um, tap, on the tap surface to hold the tap, it could be little design. So, uh, it, it is uh, very difficult to clean, maintain them. So, it has to be very simple. It should be smooth surface inside and outside for ease of cleaning and to be largely self cleansing internally as flushed is in use. So, the surface should be very smooth and very clean inside surface should be inside and outside as well as outside both should be very clean because it is tend to have too much of dirt on that. With the inside so designed that the water will drain naturally to the outlet. So, the design of this has to be proper. 
So, it drains towards the outlet. So, those are the few properties while select uh, properties which we have to look into while selecting for good sanitary fixtures. So, when, when we are dividing uh, sanitary fixtures, we can divide them into two things soil appliances, waste appliances. Broadly, the classification can be made into two parts soil appliances, waste appliances. Soil appliances, as I already said, water closets, bedet, urinals, cisterns, flesh wall, etc. Waste appliances, you can have wash basin, kitchen sink which you use in kitchen, wash basin could be used anywhere outside the kitchen or outside the kitchen, washroom and uh, hand wash area, dining anywhere and dishwasher which we use for cleaning the clothes, washing machine, etc. All these comes under waste appliances. So, if you notice soil appliances, water closets, we have fishes in that, bidet urinals and all is the out, the outcoming of that is the effluent which is coming out of that is harmful. If it is by chance mixed with the consumable thing or if it is mixed with something which is usable. So, it has to be separated while designing the plumbing fixtures. Plumbing sanitary fittings. A pipe fitting is used in the plumbing system to join multiple pipes of same size or different sizes to regulate the flow or to measure the flow. So, here we, we are talking about sanitary or plumbing fittings. So, earlier the explanation what we told what we spoke about was plumbing fixtures. So, plumbing fixture is a whole of it and plumbing fitting could be a small small things which we use to fix them, fix the plumbing fixtures or uh, appliances. So, a pipe fitting is used in the plumbing system to join multiple pipes of same size or different sizes to regulate the flow or to measure the flow. Plumbing is very important to, it is kind of engineering itself where people just uh, start looking at it in detail. Right. So, uh, in general as an architect we also have to be aware of what is uh, plumbing system and how different kinds of fittings and fixtures are there right while planning. So, it is very useful to adapt in the planning and designs. So, a pipe fitting the, we, can, we, we usually use different pipes while installing the appliances right. So, we have to be very careful or aware of that uh, multiple sizes of pipes could join. So, there should be a joint which is appropriate to join both small size, big size or different size pipes and it also has to be appropriate the extra fitting which we use like walls and all which we have studied already in one particular uh, module. So, walls and all we use to regulate the flow, right. So, to regulate the flow or to measure the flow, to measure the flow, uh, uh, how much water is entering into the building, etc. All these could be studied. They are made up of different materials like copper, iron, brass, PVC, etc. So, these are few very common materials which they use to make these fixtures, fittings, appliances as well. Copper fittings, iron fittings, brass fittings, PVC. Now, PVC is the most common material which we use for fittings especially to join the pipe, pipelines, to control the regulate, control the flow. So, they are easy to handle and long lasting. So, PVC is the common material which we use and the uh, water or anything does not contaminate inside. It does not get reacted with very easily with this material. 
So, it, there is a less chances of contaminating the water, etc. And it has a ease, good finish, it can have a good finish. So, easy and smooth flow could be achieved. There are many different kinds of fittings made from variety of materials. As I said, copper, iron, brass, PVC, etc. Uh, PVC, these are like few common things which we can see around. Some of the most common types are as follows. Collar, elbow, gasket, union, reducer, T, trap. So, we will discuss this, uh, we will discuss all of these appliances, soil appliances, waste appliances and the types of fittings in detail. There is something called as collar, elbow, gasket. So, these helps in making the system efficient so that there is no leakage, the connection is strong, there is an easy flow, there is a control of the whole thing. So, likewise, there are many more fittings which could be used. So, which few of them is what I am trying to explain which are very important. So, first let us start looking into the soil appliances. Sanitary appliances are fittings used for collection and discharge of soil or waste matter. These appliances may be grouped under soil appliances and wastewater appliances. So, soil appliances are used for collection and discharge of excreta matter. So, we have to keep in mind that these are soil appliances or the appliances where it is used for collecting these excreta matter and discharging of these excreta matter. Excreta matter could be urine, fecal, feces, etc. So, for collection and discharge of these excreta matter including water closet, urinal, bidet, etc. We classify them into soil appliances. So, examples of soil appliances include there are wide variety of appliances which we get. So, broadly if we are classifying that in uh, soil appliances we could have toilets and bidets, right. So, toilets are other types of water closets such as squatting, composting, wash down, siphonic or use universal. So, toilets could be water closets also. What generally people call is toilets as water closet. So, if you see in a design of a residence, if we have a bathroom, then there will be, uh, if you are uh, calling it as just a bathroom, there is, then there is no, no closet in that usually, generally. Now, what we do? We do attached toilet, attached bathroom. Attached bathroom is nothing but you are adding toilet or water closet inside the bathroom. So, uh, toilet could mean water closets or WC. In general, we call them as WC, water closet. So, these are available in different types. So, water closet is available in squatting, it is available in, as composting, wash down, siphonic or universal. In general, people just use this, but the difference is not known very much, like how does it work and all, is not been known to many people. So, we will see uh, these things in detail today. Bidets, next comes the bidets. Bidets is something which is not mostly used in Indian part of the uh, continent, India, but outside it is used like in western countries and all it can be used. So, bidets, they are either pedestal or wall hung. So, basically we can have pedestal or wall hung bidets. So, even in toilets or water closets, we can have the classification based on the way it is fixed. It can be wall fixed or uh, wall fixed or floor fixed, floor fitting or wall fitting, right. 
So, that is also we can have classification as and also based on the material which is used classification based on the material which is used. We can use porcelain, it can be uh, clay etc etc, ceramic. So, uh, we can have classification based on that. However, based on the functions these are the classification of water closet, squatting water closet, composting closet, wash down and siphonic or universal. Soil appliances, examples of soil appliances include urinals, bowl type, slab, stall, squatting, siphon jet or waterless. So, urinals in the urinals also which is used, these are also is considered as uh, soil appliances, not just these two, toilets and bidets, urinals slop sinks and bedpan sinks. Maybe few of them are used based on the requirement like slop sinks and bedpan sinks. They are soil appliances but it is called as sink. So, please do not get confused between the sink which you use it in uh, kitchen. So, that is a different thing. This is called as bedpan sinks or slope sinks. So, urinals uh, which could be of different types, bowl type, slab type, stall type, squatting type again, siphon jet or waterless. Waterless is something which we have like a new concept. For all the appliances, waterless is something where people are trying to have it. Slop sinks is usually found in hospitals and used for emptying and washing bed pans and urine bottles. So, these bed pans and urine bottles are used in hospitals, right? So, to clean them and to separate the hard matter and the wa uh, wat watery matter uh, differently, these slope sinks are used. And the sizes of these are very, very different which we'll, we all have to be aware of the sizes, dimensions, how to fix it, what is the standard to follow while fixing it. So, that is something which we have to look into. And bed pan sinks, again these are found in hospitals. Bed pan which, which are those small common bed pans which, is in, which could be in shape of uh, Indian toilets where the shape of that is like a bean shape, something like that we can have in, we will have in a hospital. So, that is also uh, come, that also come under soil appliances. So, now we will look into water closet in detail. Uh, it can be def defined in different ways. So, definition one says a closet that has a separate receptacle connected to a drainage system and separate provision for flushing from a supply of clean water either by the operation of a mechanism or by automatic, automatic action. So, it is just the closet that has a separate receptacle connected to drainage system and separate provision for flushing. It also has separate provision for flushing from a supply of clean water. Clean water uh, pipeline is different flushing while we flush the waste water goes into different pipeline. So, there is that separation which is done in this particular whole appliance, ok. So, either by the operation of a mechanism or by automatic action. So, these, these two things you can like you can flush from a supply of clean water either by operation of the mechanism, either you manually do it or it can be automatic. So, that is that is how you could explain like what is water closet and the other way is definition 2 says a soil appliance classified as ordinary or wash down type and the siphonic type is designed to receive human excreta directly from the user and is connected to the soil pipe by means of a trap. 
this is the way how the function functioning of the water closet is given in the definition 2. A soil, uh, soil appliance classified as ordinary or wash down type. <coughs> ordinary or wash down type, we will see what is wash down type, what is siphonic type in detail again. However, these are the way it functions, is designed to receive, basically the function is to receive the human excreta directly from the user and is connected to the soil pipe. I told you earlier for uh, connecting these soil appliances and waste appliances, we need a separate connections. It cannot be mixed at any point. So there is soil pipe and wastewater pipe which is connected for these appliances through the outlet of appliances. So the collected waste which comes from the appliance goes directly to the soil pipe by means of a trap. Trap is nothing but the joint which is connected to the appliance and the outlet that is the soil pipe. So the trap is the intermediate member which acts like connecting from the appliance which acts like which connects from appliance to the soil pipe. So that becomes very important, trap is very important. And uh, we will see in detail how water seal is to be there in that, uh, which has already been studied in module 3, but then we will just brush it up again for the understanding. Squatting or Indian type. So, in this, it is uh, very explain, it is the meaning, it is uh, meaning of the word itself says that. It is a very Indian type and squatting, if a person is sitting in a squatting position, then it is a squatting closet or it is also a very, it hit, the concept of squatting is, has started long back in India itself, the origin itself is in India, believed that it is in India. So it is also considered as Indian closet which all of us knows that Indian closet or Western closet. It can also be called as squatting, squatting closet, right? So usually we get this closets, water closets, whether it is Indian or anything. Most common material which is used is vitreous china clay. So this is the material which we use to make the whole appliance. It is usually made of vitreous china clay and is available in the market in the patterns. This uh, Indian type closet is available in different patterns like long pattern, orissa pattern and integrated type. Integrated type is nothing but long plus orissa pattern. We generally use or is some pattern closet if we are using at our residences that is widely used in houses. Long pattern is nothing but that is the shape of it is quite elongated, right? So, but or is some pattern is something which is commonly used. Where the difference also will be discussed later. Integrated type where the squatting pan and trap are made integrally. So here in integrated type what happens? The squatting pan, the pan which is there which could be either long pattern or horizon pattern whatever it is and that and also trap or one piece that means it is all made up as made as one integrated. So that is integrated type whereas in these things you can even have the pan itself in horizon pattern and then the trap could be attached to it joined by different fixed fittings. So uh, likewise integrated type is one which has both squatting pan and trap connected together. And the other material which we use is glass reinforced polyester that is this is something which is uh, a new material glass reinforced polyester squatting pans are also being manufactured and can be installed with 
is. However, it is much lightweight than or is uh, than vitreous china clay, but uh, this is something which is new uh, coming up. So, squatting pan as we see, this is a squatting pan image, right? So, we understand by seeing that the way we use that is uh, by in a squatting position and so this is the detail of uh, squatting pan. So this is called as pan. The pan if you see it is in this bean shape and it has to be these are the general common dimensions which we need to adapt in while designing. So 60 centimeter width and in the front it will have like 15 centimeter depth. Here it could be having 15 centimeter depth okay and it has to con a connection to water pipe could be there then this whole thing is this is not an integrated one this is a separate one why because we see there is a joint from the trap this is trap p trap this particular trap is used to connect the pan to the outlet the connection to soil pipe. So, the excreta will flow through this like that. Okay. So, there is a connection in between that is you we see this, we see this right. So, that is the joint which is used or a fitting we can call it as fit which is used to connect the pan and the trap. Okay and uh, that is connected to soil pipe outside and the depth of this from bottom to this is 45 centimeter. The width is 60 centimeter and the width depth is 45 centimeter. In the front, uh, the in the in front the width is 15 centimeter. The height behind is 30 centimeter. So, in 15 centimeter the whole trap and the bottom is connected, right. So, the pan is provided with an integral flushing rim or so of suitable type. The inside of the bottom of the pan should have sufficient slope towards the outlet for quick disposal during flushing. The pan is connected to the flushing system by means of flushing pipe. The top of the trap is connected to the anti-siphon or vent pipe. This explaining, this is explaining how the Indian closet or Indian type of water closet could be connected with the flushing tank. So this is flushing tank this is flushing tank or a cistern it could be also called as cistern so they are used to store the water and the uh, connected through the pipe to the rim of the pan we see the rim of the pan here right so there will be holes in the rim of the pan and when the pressing of these things happen because of the functioning of this the water flows into that and passes through the rim of this uh, pan and uh, due to the pressure it flushes the waste matter in the pan. So that is how it works. So now for that the standard would be we need to have even if the ground level is somewhere here we need to have around 1.22 meters from the uh, top of this pan till the top of the system. 1.22 meters is something which we need to have the height of the overhead, uh, height of the cistern or a flushing tank because through the pressure it pa water passes easily there and it flushes in the pan. And we also have a health facet. Health facet is nothing but a uh, hand tap which we can held in a hand. So which is next to which is either fixed next to the 
closet or towards the side of it, right. And this is the minimal dimension of uh, Indian closet. It depends on the shape also. Earlier what we shaped was just a bean shape. Now this is again different shape which we are getting. So while choosing also it is possible for us to look the shape of the pan, depth of the pan, depth of the pan is this one whether it is good or not. So we also uh, try to choose appropriate uh, closet for different levels also. For ground floor maybe we could go for a higher depth of a pan. For a first floor we go for a lesser depth of the pan. So likewise uh, because here if we see it is 205. The roof thickness what we have is 150 mm but this is more than that. So it is possible for us to find suitable type, appropriate type of Indian closet if we are going for uh, uh, other than ground floor. Likewise, uh, if we are using in, uh, these uh, closets and soil pipes and all, it is always good if we have a double ceiling below. So all the pipes which you see here below could come in the line. Now say for example if this is the floor line. Now this much height is required for us to cover. So likewise if we just have a floor this is 205 our floor gets get our floor gets over by this much. Right. So in this line uh, this will be below the floor if we do not have a double ceiling. So we need to cover that. That means we need to have a raised floor or resist floor. So the floor itself can resist or raised. So likewise we can use these fixtures. And always there is a vent in these traps whether it is P trap, S trap, Q trap etc. There should be a vent there so that to remove the foul smell of the closet. And also it is very easy to clean if you have that. So that is about uh, Indian closet. Then we have uh, washed down or western type water closet which we commonly call it as WC. Right. So an alternate to the squatting pan, an alternate, this is a commonly used alternate for squatting pan and it is very very popular especially for old people, aged people. It is very comfortable to sit on these kind of uh, closets because it is raised. It is not on the floor, just on the floor. So it is easy for usage. It is provided with a wide flushing rim and a trap normally available in one piece. In this what happens you do not have a uh, trap separately. It is all connected the pan and the trap all of them are connected and so it is integral part. So you can call it as integrally made one. So it is all one piece right flushing rim and a trap normally available in one piece construction with an inlet or supply horn for connecting to the flushing pipe. It may be provided with P and S trap as desired. It may be provided with P and S trap as desired. These traps are not, uh, have come based on the shape of it as we all know. And uh, commonly used is for these kind of uh, closets, P and S traps are commonly used. These types of water closets require less space than squatting pattern type and can be flushed by independent cisterns. The flushing tank what I was talking to you about 
the flushing tank in the Indian closet which is having a flushing tank that is also called as cistern right. So these types of water closets require less space than squatting pattern type. The size could be less for this closet and can be flushed by independent cisterns which may be installed either at high level or low level, low level or be a single unit having both the seat and the cistern. The cisterns could be at the seat level or above the seat level or below the seat level. So this works independently. So it is not an issue at what level we have to fix whereas in squatting pattern the cisterns has to always be at above the uh, pan height, pan surface height. So here we see wash down or western type of uh, WC seat. Now here we are seeing two types. One is floor mounted. We can see that this is fixed on the floor. The whole thing with the pedestal is fixed on the floor. Here we see the fixture is on the wall. The whole commode or a closet is fixed to the vertical surface and this with the cistern. Here we see the cistern or a, a flushing tank is just one piece. The whole thing including the trap, pan and the cistern, it is all one piece. It is not separate. So in that way this is also very efficient for avoiding the leakages. Right. So we have floor type and uh, wall type, wall fixed, wall mounted or floor mounted. Based on the requirement and based on the space analysis in the toilet, based on the connections which is provided uh, for plumbing in particular house, we could choose either wall, wall mounted or floor mounted. So the advantage is like here uh, if we are choosing this uh, wall mounted closets which has a trap, the, in this particular image what you are seeing the cistern or a flushing tank is inside the wall, right. So this whole unit is connected to the trap, it has a lid, seat cover, etc. All of this is already there in this. But the tank is not visible. So here if we see the width is more because the tank also has to be kept in front of the wall. But here it is concealed, the tank is concealed. The, so the space available for us to provide is for us we need very smaller depth than this. So this is possible where we have a shortage of space. and. The other thing is it is very easy to clean below the this kind of uh, closet. It is very easy to clean below the closet because there is a clear space available below the closet. And the other thing is here we have one disadvantage in uh, floor mounted could be advantage there is an advantage and also disadvantage uh, there are cases in wall mounted that because of the weight of the human or whatever it breaks down, it breaks from the joint but here it does not happen whereas here the leakage is less or the faults which occurs on the roof is less but here since the trap is connected through the wall. Uh, there is a, a prob uh, there is a possibility of avoiding the leakage. So the wall could wall could be uh, checked on leakage, but here the floor and the roof will start uh, leaching. I mean uh, the water will start uh, accumulated in the roof and start dripping. So it is quite difficult to identify the fault when it is floor mounted. But it is very stable.
So, this is a very very common uh, um, kind of uh, uh, system which is washed down on western type. So, here we have lid connection from water pipe. So, from be behind the lid we usually have the connection from the water, water comes from there and around the rim there will be holes. So, the water passes through that hole and uh, when the liver is pressed on the flushing system the water pours onto the surface of the closet. So, that is how this is working. Now, if we see there is a yes shape, yes shape trap, right. So, we see always we should make sure that there is a water seal in the closet. Whenever we observe these closets, there is water always remaining on the, in the inside the closet. We can see the water there. So, this is called as water seal. The 5 centimeter what we are seeing that is called as water seal. In all the traps, the whole traps, uh, either P, Q, S, whatever it is, we, the, there is a provision for this water seal. The advantage of having this water seal is so that the foul smell in case from the soil pipe does not come back to the closet or the internal area of the space. So, to avoid that this water seal is very much required. Yeah. So, how do you fix these floor mounted or wall mounted fixture? So, this floor mounted if we see this is the roof right this is the roof and there is a wall on top and bottom and the skirting uh, the deadening that is tiling which is there here and the flooring tiles which is there here. Now, this is a commode which, which is floor mounted. So, what happens the trap is here. So, the trap has to be connected hole is supposed to, uh, we need to make a hole in the roof slab to connect the trap. So, the hole is made in the roof slab uh, that usually they call it as core cutting. So, the uh, after that a pipe is erected and uh, it is connected to the trap. So, the uh, flush of the waste happens through this and it reaches like this to the other down pipes or soil pipes and all the soil pipes should have vent pipe outside the building which goes up to 1.5 meter height. This was discussed earlier in the module 3 like how to make uh, ducts and venting for plumbing fixtures and plumbing system, right. So, and then we have floor mounted closet. Here the cistern could be uh, the tank, water tank could be on the top or it also could be inside the wall. The second thing is now as I said when we have these uh, uh, floor mounted we need to have false ceiling or drop down roof or the roof itself has to have like come like this. The roof itself. the roof could come like this right or it could be raised roof or a floor raised floor. So, this whole thing gets concealed this whole uh, connection of this gets concealed from the eye view. Whereas, this is avoided when we choose for wall mounted. So, wall mounted here if we see off the floor closet. So, there is a clear gap from floor. So, it could be open easily cleaned floor. It can have a good neat floor. 
Now here what happens the what, uh, waste is connected outside like this and then it goes to the soil pipe. So it also has the vent pipe is compulsory whether it is chosen like this or that for any soil pipe the vent pipe is compulsory. Right. So this is off the floor water closet on the floor water closet depending upon the requirement you could choose whatever it is on the site. So these are the few standards which we could see for closet. Here we see minimum here we see the uh, there are three things to see one is uh, cistern and another one is pan and another one is trap right. So uh, this is all one piece. Now if the uh, cistern has to be seen or not seen whether it is concealed in the wall or put outside of the wall we have to consider from the floor level the cistern top has to be 720 and the height of the pan from the ground level has to be 400 mm the measurements which has been given is in mm okay and there are fixing screws fixed below the closet so that it can be screwed and removed easily also while there is a replacement or any other problem found in the closet and there is a uh, lid uh, cover seat and then the lid. So these are the minimum dimensions which we have to follow while designing the uh, commode and uh, while whether we are using it in section or plan or elevation this is how it could be represented while drawing this because it is commonly used closet uh, these dimensions are uh, something which we have to look into. So uh, we will continue the next part in the next session. Thank you.